Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Manuelita Cody. I am the president of the North American Chilean Chamber of Commerce. I welcome everyone on behalf of the directors and the members of the chamber. We thank you for joining us today. Today is a very exciting uh, webinar. It is a part two of our series of webinars to highlight the successes of our local Chilean entrepreneurs. We have, of course, with us uh, Consul General of Chile in New York, Mario Ignacio Artaza, who has agreed to be with us uh, in this series. And um, I thank you, Mario, for being with us. Mario and I had the opportunity to go visit Carmen Vergara, who we are going to be talking to, uh, her business, her designing business. And it was uh, very inspiring to be with Carmen and to see her at her workplace. So um, it's a quick introduction about Mario. Um, everybody knows Mario because he's done a wonderful job with the consulate. Um, he's dealt with a lot since the um, crisis with the pandemic. And um, uh, he's been a career diplomat for many years, particularly in Asia. And he is hands-on, help um, any way you can uh, kind of consult. And we're very appreciative. So I want to give the floor to Mario and he will take it from there. And uh, we'll hear a fascinating story about Carmen and her business and what she plans to do moving forward. Thank you all for joining us. I'm going to retreat to the background and you have the floor, Mario. Never never uh, in the background, Manolita. Good afternoon to everyone. It's a privilege and a pleasure to be able to uh, be present this afternoon from New York, a very hot, muggy, kind of cloudy day uh, here in this part of the US. Uh, we have a very special program which is part of our protagonist series, which has been an endeavor undertaken by the North American Chilean Chamber of Commerce. A few months ago, we had a, a couple who represented entrepreneurship being undertaken uh, with regards to the uh, restaurant uh, uh, sector, the service sector. And this time we have Carmen Vergara, whose story really is, is worth highlighting. Along with Manolita, we took a train ride to Greenwich, Connecticut, a very quaint uh, New England uh, town by rivers, uh, by the sea, uh, in order to meet Carmen. Uh, Greenwich is a very special place, and for those who have never been there, uh, it, was, it was established back in 1640. And uh, back, uh, back during the revolutionary uh, days of the US, people like Samuel and John Adams, and including George Washington, uh, went to, the, to that uh, uh, village of farms, of grass, uh, in order to pass on to uh, different uh, uh, areas of a very young nation. And in a way, the story of America, of, of the establishment of the U.S., uh, has something to do with uh, 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 Carmen, who is a Chilean national uh, living in Greenwich, working as we speak from an apartment located uh, in Manhattan, in, in Upper Manhattan, on around 80th uh, uh, and 2nd, uh, to be more exact. And Carmen is someone that we define as a, a Chilean woman uh, who is armed with a fine brush, but a big heart. And we'd like to welcome her. Uh, welcome, Carmen. Uh, we can't hear you, which is the, which, which is the, which is the phrase of, of the 21st century uh, 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 COVID era. Uh, microphone on, please. Okay, can there you hear go. me now? There okay. Can hear you well. Thank you, welcome. Oh. Welcome to, to, Thank to, you. To, to the event, to this uh, webinar, the second webinar. Please tell us a little, little bit about you so we can start. Uh, who is Carmen Vergara? Uh, where are you, where from Chile are you, are you originally from? A little bit about your family and, and, and your background, please. Okay, well, I'm Carmen Vergara and I uh, was born in Chile in San Bernardo near to Santiago. I immigrated to New York in 1992 just thinking in staying two years, but I ended up uh, being here half of my life, you know, the last 30 years. So yeah, I, I, my whole family live in Chile. I have two um, children, which are 27, 24, and I lived the last 20 years in Connecticut, first nine years in New York, and actually working a little bit there, a little bit here. <laughs> And, and, and tell us a little bit about your studies and your work uh, experience before the business that you have today, which is the cornerstone of, of this webinar, which is decorative finishes. Tell us a little bit about what, what, what you have done before 
and where where do we stand today with regards to uh, what you do uh, work-wise? Okay, well, I was born in a family which my parents are teachers, so I was very stimulated as if I was a child in the art field, because since I was nine years old, I realized that I'd be an artist. Uh, I studied graphic design in University of Chile. I graduated in 1985. And, uh, and then I, yes, I continued with uh, some art uh, classes, you know, uh, like decorative uh, painting in Chile as a hobby. But when I came to New York, I realized that you can make a living of uh, doing decorative painting because, you know, I'm very good drawing and illustrating, but I loved also to work with different materials. And I realized that this is the perfect place to develop my art, <laughs> decorative art. And Carmen, kind of, why did you choose to live in Greenwich? Uh, uh, why, why Connecticut? How, how did because, that come about? Well, the first nine years I lived in New York, Manhattan, my two kids, they were born here. But then, you know, I miss, uh, as a town girl, because I grew up in San Bernardo, kind of, uh, you know, a countryside place. I miss, you know, having flowers and more space for the, the children. So. I met a Chilean couple who used to work uh, refinishing furniture in Stanford, Connecticut, the Jara family. Um, and then I start working with them, you know, decorating furniture. And that was the first step to get clients in Connecticut. And then I realized how uh, good were the schools, public schools for children. And I love the place for making a living in a business because Greenwich uh, concentrated a lot of wealthy families that they can afford to pay for these services. Yeah. And, and tell us a little bit about uh, your, your, your business. It, it's a small business. We, we, we were able to, to visit your workshop uh, located in a very historic part of Greenwich. You told us about how close it was to the school where your, where your boys went when they were young. You told us a little bit about that Chilean community, which you interact with. We'll be talking about that as well. Tell us a little bit about what the business is all about, because what, what's decorative finishes? What are we talking about? Well, um, uh, it's like art applicated to the interior design. I'm doing a specific, uh, very specific finishes on walls and furniture. Most of them custom made. Uh, yeah, I study, you know, I took some classes in a, um, a full, um, institute in Chicago. Uh, a few classes, and then uh, I realized about new um, products to create finishes and work. So it's plenty of different techniques that you can uh, add to your portfolio. So I start just working uh, in a few painting furniture, decorating uh, rooms with uh, animals, flowers. Then I start, you know, uh, learning about new techniques. Um, and then, yeah, I start the business in 2002 as a formal business. And uh, yeah, a few the last ten years, I um, run in a in a studio in Greenwich, which is a very um, pleasant place to live. And yeah, when did you when did you realize that you could make a living from with your studio and out of your, your talents? When did you realize that this could be a business, a profitable business for you in this part of the United States? Well, I was born as an artist. So I can't think in another thing rather than art, but I was a very good student, you know, at school, but I feel inside, you know, very inside me that I'm an artist, you know, and when I came here for the first time in New York, it was the first time that I saw uh, painted furniture and beautiful murals in a Fifth Avenue apartment. So I realized that I can do that here. So I start little by little practicing in my home first <laughs> and then getting clients. And then, well, until I met a very important person in my life, which is a uh, owner of a uh, sandwich partner construction company. He was the guy who opened all those for me. Yeah. You, you told us, uh, you told my Alita and myself with regards to that special person that came in your life uh, who helped you uh, make the business more profitable and also more focused. Uh, it, it, tell us a little bit about what your day to day is like. Uh, this morning we were speaking very early, and you said, Mario, I was thinking about postponing this because I'm I'm full of work. It, Super busy, yeah. <laughs> tell us, yeah. Tell us about about, about your day to day. What's it like? Well, by now I'm busy. Super busy, you know, but happy. The the good thing about uh, an independent independent business woman is that I can choose when can I take vacation. 
<laughs> when and where. <laughs> but yeah, this uh, season is the most busy of the time between uh, March and December. We are really, really busy. And I don't know why, uh, I mean, how today everyone is very busy. It's so hard to find people to help you now. I assume it's because they got the COVID and people spend more time in their homes and they start making renovations, uh, making their homes more beautiful. But yeah, by now I'm so busy. Uh, luckily my kids are grown up. They live independently, so they don't need me. <laughs> so I can spend more time working. And yeah, uh, I, I'm being very, very busy the last time. Yeah, the last few months. And walk us through the stages of of uh, of a task that you do in an apartment. Uh, you plan, then you design, then you draw, then you paint. What is what are the different stages? I work uh, close to the designers or architects, most uh, closer to the designers because they decide. I mean, they they visit uh, my my studio or they ask for samples. Um, and then they choose some samples and then uh, we have to create um, colors. Sometimes uh, when they decide the texture, we have to work on the perfect colors based on the, uh, the rest of the room. I mean, the fabric, the floor, uh, the furniture. So that is a process. Sometimes it takes months, uh, six months. Um, sometimes it's faster. Uh, and then when they decide which finish they want to install on the walls, you know, I come up with a price and then they approve or we make changes or, and then we set up uh, a schedule for that job. But I work based on drawings. They send me the drawings and the area that I have to cover with that finish. And yeah, then I send uh, samples and the price. Have the designs and the taste of colors changed and evolved over time? Have you had to readequate your task as well? Of course, yeah. At the beginning, you know, when I started with this business in 2002, uh, they are uh, used to ask more for, for painting or decorative painting and more figurative, like flowers, animals. Uh, but by now, since the last maybe five years, it's been more modern, mm -hmm. fine lines, very simple, um, neutral colors. But I have to say that in, in the United States, in this area, it's, I mean, every person have their own style. I mean, still people asking for noodles, mm -hmm. but mo most of my work is more uh, modern now, more simple and modern. So we have to adjust, you know, uh, our um, samples and creation to the demand, you know? So, but still we have people that they ask for very specific things that they are not the, uh, the things that everyone wants, you know, like, for example, I have to do a bathroom at the end of September that is uh, imitating a wallpaper that is a very cubic design. So we're um, playing with the designs, the colors, the size of the design. So that is very specific, not, it's not modern. <laughs> How, yeah. How many people work with you in, in, in a project, Carmen? All depends. By now, today we are doing a, a specific room in this apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, I have today. We'll I have see. two people. Yeah, I have two people with me. But tomorrow we're going to be five because we have to work on details because we uh, the due date is uh, September third. I mean, people is moving to this apartment, but we have to finish this weekend. Yeah. yeah. I have to ask you a, a, a question that is natural in this 21st century, uh, uh, and it's very important because it transcends any any border. It's regarding being a woman entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Can you please tell us a little bit about how your experience as a woman entrepreneur, a Latin American entrepreneur, a Chilean entrepreneur, uh, the highs and lows? Tell us a little bit about your experience. Well, I have to say that... Uh... You know, American people, uh, if they see talent on you, they support you. They support you, they give you the chance to give your art. And on the way to get in this business, you know, I found in my way people that they, they are really support me. I mean, in the way that they say, your job is amazing. I mean, you're so talented. You had to make a living of this. And uh, to be honest, in some point I was, doubting to continue because it was difficult at the at the beginning to get enough business to survive. I mean, to pay the rent and all the stuff. 
but I uh, I keep going. You know, I I knew that this is uh, a business that I can do well, and uh, finally I end up, you know, doing well. And I had to say that, uh, like I said before, uh, people is really um, grateful and they support you when they see that you are good for uh, in your uh, profession. And that is my feeling, yeah. So and especially, mm -hmm. no, please. And especially people in Connecticut, uh, they are very grateful. They always say and appreciate, you know, your talent. They say thanks so much for having this. I don't know how you do it, and <laughs> it's like magic. And yeah, of course, you know, I feel so so happy. I believe that in Chile, is so many talented, believe me, yeah, so talented. And but here they really appreciate. Uh, also, they have to, the money to afford, you know, having this uh, art on their wall. And yeah, I'm very, you know, happy with my experience as an entrepreneur here. To the up to, to the up and coming generations who are probably going to be seeing and listening to you, what are some lessons that you think that are worthwhile for them to 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 know from your experience as a mother, I, as I, a woman, as a, as a designer? I'll be very honest to you, when I choose to study uh, design or art, you know, I come from a family of teachers, and uh, be, but because I have very good grades, you know, they ask me to study another thing, like nursing or being an engineer and an architect, but ju I just want to be an artist, you know? <laughs> and then, um, yeah, my advice is follow your dream, follow the thing, because everyone wants to be something, you know, and I knew since I born that I was an artist and I followed that, you know, and keep going, keep going. It's not easy at the beginning, but if you're good at it, just go ahead and believe in your dreams and believe in what you're good for. Well, you're someone, yeah. who's, you're someone who's very much loved amongst the community of, in Connecticut of that I am 110% aware of. So uh, all the strength and the power to you. Is it very much different to work uh, in Connecticut than to work in other communities that you work with uh, you, you, uh, here in Manhattan or even in, in, in your projects in Florida? Is it very different? Of course, of course. <laughs> yeah, Connecticut is uh, it's the perfect place to develop the art. You know, I never would get to move there to educate my kids there and develop my business there. Uh, I, like I said, they, are very, uh, they really appreciate the art and it's a very quiet and peaceful place to live. Uh, here in Manhattan is different. I love Manhattan in the way that people is more creative. They they are not afraid to have bright colors or piece of art. In Connecticut, people is more conservative. You know, same colors, same kind of furniture. <laughs> but here in Manhattan, you can see the art everywhere. You know, anything. The the only part that I don't like is so many rules. You know, they give you nine to five to work, a lot of paper, work at home, liability insurance. You know, <laughs> wait for the elevator to pick up you after maybe thirty minutes or more. You know, yeah. And Connecticut is free. You can drive. You know, park in the in the parking lot. I mean, it's very easy to get to work. You know, even sometimes you can work on uh, weekends. You know. <laughs> And, and, and there's an element that's very important, which is the, the financing uh, your, your your endeavors. Because in a way, when times are bad, you need to be able to finance to start looking where am I where where am I going to be headed to? Tell tell, tell us a little bit about uh, uh, how it's been to uh, access uh, support financially for your business to to thrive to to grow. Well, I have to say that I start just by myself with with my money yes. and my work. But then later on, you know, I realized the access that I have uh, to to the banking. That is a special bank in, in Connecticut. Um, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know if I can say the name. <laughs> but it's good for we're small in a, business. We're in a friendly conversation. It's a, it's a, it's the first county bank, you know, they, they are very uh, helping uh, small communities and people in business like me. And uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't. I didn't have uh, problems to start in the business and getting a credit, you know. And after a few years, you will build up your your um, credit um, history. Exactly. So that made my life more easier. It was very easy. I mean, if you complete all the rules, like paying taxes, you know, being very legal, all the um, insurance and all that stuff, it's very, very easy. 
they support you. I mean, I love that thing from the American culture. They support you. They believe in you. So. That's that, that's also very uh, a strong message, Carmen. It, it, to our viewers, we have a we have two special uh, 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 things that we that we have uh, to share. One is that once again, Carmen is right now working with her team uh, in Manhattan. Uh, Carmen, if you can show us, share with us a little bit about where you are, what you're doing, because I think people will will be able to also acknowledge a little bit better uh, who is Carmen by showing us what's this all about. Okay, first of all, we are in, uh, like you said, 80th Street and 2nd Avenue in Manhattan, working with these two handsome guys, John, he's American, and Carlos, he's from Chile. Uh, we are doing a very special finish on this uh, apartment board. This is uh, it's going to be a girl room. Okay. Let me uh, show you closer. This is a technique. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. It's we a can. metallic thing. Yeah, it's uh, made by hand. So the guys are applying the uh, the material with the roller, and I'm working with um, this tool. Okay. The the um. It's like the a brush. Yeah. See it like making lines. Can you see the texture here? We see it perfectly. Yeah, this is in white and later on we apply uh, metallic paint over it. So no more pink? No, no more pink. <laughs> yeah, so it's uh, more than one vendor in, in this apartment. Here is another company working on the hallway. Hey guys, say hi guys. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so it's more than one vendor working at the same time because we need to finish on time. How it's long, a beautiful. <laughs> how long does the project from your part take? How, how two many, weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. We start on. We were supposed to start in August second, but it was a delay. No. But two weeks is my my time to finish this room, and we are still on time. So so basically, your you, your your gift, it, your talent is. The special brushing that you apply to the walls and also by the hand. By hand. Yeah, by hand. Because it looks like a wallpaper, but it's a, um, I don't know if you can see it here, but it's a uh, handmade product. The texture. You know? the texture. That, is the, that is the value of the job. It's handmade and custom color because normally I work based on fabric and then we get the perfect harmony in each room. Yes, well, when we went to Greenwich, we you you took us, uh, Manorita and myself, uh, first to a restaurant and then uh, to a doctor's mm -hmm. office where you had also used different techniques as well. What are, yeah. what, what are those techniques called that you also use? Uh, the one in the uh, doctor's office, it was a plaster. It's a product uh, made of um, uh, marble powder. And most of the products are, come from uh, Italy. Uh, and then you can create any color and finish. And we add uh, a wax over it that protect the surface. So um, yeah, that's what, it's a plenty of different materials that you can use for finishes. Thank you. So, so your art, your work, your, your, your emprendimiento, your business also evolves, it has been evolving, correct? Yeah, of course. I have to go with the times, you know, with the, uh, what is the demand, uh, demanding? What is the uh, designers want, you know? Uh, yeah, and I have, that is the challenge. Create things that they are unique. People pay for have a unique world that no one else have it at home. And, and in that in that line of thought, uh, you shared with us that you're also expanding. You're not only doing the, uh, these projects in Connecticut, in New York, you're also going to uh, Florida. Can you tell us a little bit about what, what you're doing there as well? Yeah, I start, uh, uh, in 2020, during the pandemic, I started working in Florida uh, because same designers uh, and same clients are building a new home in Long Beach. So I start flying to there to for work. Uh, it's different in Florida. You 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 asked me before about that, but in Florida, people it's not working until five. You know, they work just until three thirty. <laughs> I want to move over there. They, yeah, they say the best workers are in New York and Connecticut because, you know, in Florida, it's so hard to find people. They are living early. They complain if they have to ride too long. I mean, an hour or two is too much. But for us, you know, it's normal. It's normal time. 
what about the competition, Carmen? Do you, do you compete against other people in this part of the world? No, no because, you know, yeah, we are very unique people doing this kind of job. There is just a few companies here in the area. Now there's another company here, which is huge, and it does beautiful work, but we are not competition because we are so big. <laughs> they work like 10 people at the same time. I'm more, I mean, I just in a small company, but I do very fine in a specific uh, room. They don't give me huge, you know, <laughs> jobs. So I get things that I can handle, but uh, it's not um, uh, a lot of competition. We're just a few people doing this. And also it's a lot of physical work. Not so many people like to do that, you know? <laughs> What, what inspires you today in terms of your designs? What Before you were telling us about butterflies and birds, what is what do you like to do today? But it's, it's different. You know, for example, I did a, a girl, baby girl room in Darien, and it was so beautiful. I mean, they asked me for butterflies and flowers. And uh, so I love to do that. I uh, every, every day is different. I can't say that I have just one one thinking about creation every day is different but the creation are based in um, talking with the client what they want you know as soon as you visit uh, their home because i have private clients also most of my work is from big companies designers and construction companies but i have also a private client when you visit a client you you know you know what they like because the style that they have in their home so you, you have to listen and that is the beauty part about my work. You know, every day is different, every project is different, every place is different, and I love that. Yeah, I really, really love that. And, and what, are, what are your what are your next plans? Do you intend to take this to, back to Chile? Do you want to continue? Well, Chile is totally different than the United States, but I've been told that uh, it's a possible, you know, client uh, in, uh, in Chile. I want to try uh, some uh, decorative finishes on furniture. Mm -hmm. And I, um, in conversation with another company, a small company called uh, Pintando con Orgullo, <laughs> that they, they just work with uh, organic painting. So we are planning to do workshops and maybe try these finishes and try to find clients, you know? Because, because even I've been here 30 years and my kids, they were born here. I still feel like a Chilean person and I'm very attached to my family and I love to go to Chile every year. And I am trying to spend more time there. Yeah. And, and, and your next uh, business uh, stages, do you, do, you, do you look or identify other areas in design that you'd like to go into, that you have in your head that you want to go? Do you want to grow? Listen, when you're an artist, you can do anything. <laughs> you can decorate a cake. Or, but yeah, I love I love jewelry, for example, design jewelry, um, um, fashion design. But uh, yeah, but graphic design, I mean, textures and decorative interior design is what, what I like the most, you know, try different techniques, you know, even though you can you can design your own wallpaper. So I would love to do that. I always say that I, I won't have enough life to do <laughs> what I have in my mind. You know, <laughs> I never stop. Uh, the creation process never stops. Good, good. Uh, uh, we have we we, uh, we announced we had two surprises. One was this brief tour around the apartment where Kadiman is right now working, and the second was uh, regarding uh, your uh, you giving back to the community. Uh, the way mm -hmm. I, I, the way we learned about you in a way was the fact that you are very active uh, in the Chilean community in Connecticut. I mean, whoever uh -huh. I meet, whoever I meet from Connecticut, uh, if they don't know Carmen Vergara, they're, they're not from Connecticut. So uh, <laughs> they're in the wrong state. Uh, but the, se the second surprise was uh, regarding um, how much you care for others, and there's uh -huh. very dear to you, which is which is uh, mm -hmm. uh, regarding uh, supporting uh, children in Uganda. And we have a video yeah. uh, that we'll, we'll share with with, with the audience. Uh, Nicolas, I think, who is from who is in Uruguay right now, uh, participating in this webinar. If we can show the video, and then we'll talk to Carmen about it. I'm 
so excited to the top of the mountain. I feel a joy down in my heart. That's why I'm singing and dancing. You are welcome, we love you, Vistas. You are welcome, we love you, Vistas. Oh, I'm so I'm so excited to the top of the mountain. That was a stunning video, Carmen, uh, uh, and uh, I know how much you're emotionally attached to Uganda. Can you please tell us a little bit about this project that you have, which is very dear to your heart? We know that. Please. Yeah, the, the mic. Mic's off. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. Uh, first of all, I have to say that that video was made with, by another Chilean woman, Francis, Francisca Bogdan. Uh, she made that video for me. It's a um, fundraiser that we run in our studio. I used to have a partner. Uh, sorry. I used to have a partner uh, in Latelier, another studio that I had before. And we um, run this uh, fundraiser to help these people in uh, Uganda. So that starts with another Chilean guy, uh, Ine Rubilar, who is a part of. Um, Beginning a new foundation, he built water well in uh, Uganda, and it made him when we volunteer um, helping people after the um, um, Sandy hit uh, Long Island. Hurricane Sandy, Hurricane Sandy. Yeah, yeah. We, we've been uh, volunteering there, cleaning and making food for preparing food for the people. So we start talking about uh, Uganda and the kids and uh, the way that he no. can uh, raise more money. So I come up with this art project. So we've been in, um, I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you fine. Okay, okay. So uh, we traveled to Uganda for the first time in 2016. So we are a group of Chilean people, some are from Chile, some are from the United States. And um, yeah, uh, we start to help with this community by the art. So I teach um, to the kids uh, some art they never saw before. Uh, brushes and paper in colors. So it's been very successful, and all my friends, family, and clients are helping me to support the um, this community school. And uh, we've been in that project for five years, and uh, we start because of the uh, COVID pandemic. Uh, so we're planning to come back in 2022. Uh, I have to say that uh, Fundación Cuenta Conmigo and other Chilean people, they are very generous helping me to with the fundraisers. And um, some of my clients, like one of the construction company, they uh, support um, giving the money for the water well because it's a very cool community. And um, yeah, we provide food. Uh, we build some uh, classrooms. And uh, yeah, the, the community is growing. They are planting now, they have water. And this is very, very personal. <laughs> yes, it is. Person yeah, yeah, it is. In, in, in that line, uh, we have a question from Claudia Morales. And, and she asked a question which is in a way linked to Uganda, in a way linked to San Bernardo, in a way linked to Connecticut. If you could go back in time to, 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 the, to, the, to the time that you arrived to the US, would you have done or, or uh, would, you have, would you do something different that you, than you already did? Would your life have been different? Did you choose? Are you, in, in other words, did you do everything that you wanted to do and, 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 and until today? 
Yes, listen, I have a phrase that I told my kids like maybe four years ago. I told them, if I die today, I'm going to die so happy because, you know, I did everything that I dream in my life, even some new things like Africa that I never thought about it. Uh, and my kids are grown up, independent, really good uh, kids and have a good family. Uh, I really love my work. Sometimes it's not easy, you know, like every every job. But uh, yeah, I love what I do. I'm so satisfied with my life, and I'm ready for more action, <laughs> and, and, more adventures. <laughs> and and this is a question which I think is very important for the North American Chilean Chamber of Commerce, as well as the consulate here in New York. Uh, how do you define the Chilean community in this part of the U.S.? Uh, what initiatives could we undertake in order to make it more uh, together, more united. How do you see uh, uh, what we need to be uh, doing? Well, you know, the Chilean people is very special, no? Because uh, um, I think uh, we are very generous people, but we are very quiet. I mean, we are not getting along too often. But my experience, uh, it was, um, yeah, because we are a small community, especially in Connecticut, we used to get together. We have different groups, you know, religious, uh, folkloric, um, mm -hmm. uh, and just friends. <laughs> but people used to say that I, I've always been a Chilean woman. I never changed that. But uh, in my thinking, I think we need to get uh, together, more more communicate, you know. Uh, that's why I try to share every information that I get from the Chilean consulate. Thanks. And uh, yeah, that is, that is pretty much that I'm thinking, you know, get more connected. And I think this program that you are running today, like uh, we're doing today, is helping to do that because we don't know what the other Chilean people is doing there. I have to say that I have a lot of Chilean friends, and uh, but other people, they don't know. They are disconnected. And there is so many things that you can do as a community. We are all Chilean. You know, after all these 30 years, I, I feel like uh, I'm a Chilean woman. <laughs> in we New York indeed, now. <laughs> we are indeed and always uh, in, in need to communicate, to, to, to grow and to learn together. And that is one of the one, one of the elements most importantly uh, behind this initiative from North, the North American Chilean Chamber of Commerce of, uh, of having a, a protagonist uh, appear through our webinar. There's one an additional question. What, what made you choose Uganda? It's just because we met Ainer. You know, Ainer, because if you think about Africa, especially Uganda, you know, it's not an easy country. They have a lot of political trouble. So if you go to the, um, I'm sorry, to the uh, page in the internet, it says that it's a red country. It's a lot of revolution there. But it's because Ainer, he is, uh, he's been, he, he's still there. He moved to live there. He had the malaria also. He had the malaria also. He, he almost died, you know. But uh, uh, he's living in Africa now. We're still in contact. And um, it was because of him. He told us, you know, we can go in this way because they know him very well there. They trust him. We are the only white people in the town when we get there. So they trust him. I, I have a final question because I have to hand over the, uh, this to uh, Manolita. But I have a question. Uh, how do you maintain interest in what you do during the day? Do you sing? Yes. <laughs> no, I listen to music. You listen to music while, while yeah, watching. I love, yeah, yeah, I love music. Yeah, yeah. Well, 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 well with that, I hope that someday uh, 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 we can join you uh, and uh, dance in one of those rooms that you're that you're bringing uh, uh, life to. And I'd like to thank you on behalf of the Consul General of Chile here in New York, the team that works alongside uh, with me for uh, being ever present, for being a true protagonist, a woman, a Chilean woman with a big heart amongst our community. Manuelita, back to you. Thank you, Mario. As usual, fabulous um, questions, fabulous uh, moderator. Thank you for your support. I love, um, I love the fact that we are right in the middle of your work day. I know it's a little loud, but it is it is it is as, as authentic as it gets, and I, I appreciate that. I um I just love uh sharing the story of someone who decided to just pick up and go, and 
you know, pursue her dream and not only pursue it and, and, and do it, but do beyond and, and continue to do. And not only that, but now helping others find a way to pursue that dream. So uh, we thank you for sharing your story. The mission of these webinars is to make them inspirational to others, inspirational to others to try to do things, but also to share their, their story with us. So we invite our audience, thank you for being with us today. We invite you, Carmen, if you know of anybody who wants to share their story, who has an equally or uh, interesting beginnings in the US, uh, we'd love to hear it. So we know you're extra busy, super busy. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Marty, for your time. Thank the whole audience. And um, we'd love to know about you now, Carmen. This, you know, now we know all about you. And there's no escaping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know where I live. <laughs> exactly. Thanks so much. Okay, so, thanks so much for the opportunity. I love you. Love it. The mic went off, Manuelita. Your, your mic went off. Yeah. You can hear me now. Okay. Yes. What I wanted to say is thank you again, and the uh, information will be on video. For anyone who wants to share it, see it, who wasn't able to stay for the uh, entirety of the conversation, uh, we'll have it available to you. Thank you very much, Carmen. Thank you very much, Marita. Thank have you, everyone. Thank you. Thank and you. This will end our our conversation today. Thank you. Okay. Goodbye. Bye. 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 <laughs>